welcome to another episode of Wide Open Talk Show. This is Wide Open Talk Show, episode six for Thursday. It is April the 14th, 2016, and joining me as always is my good friend, Mr. Samuel Lewis. How are you doing on this fine Thursday? Doing fantastic. Almost the end of the week. It's not like I have a job, but it's still almost <laughs> the end of the week. So, <laughs> Well, you know what? I have to admit, But being self-employed as an IT consultant is almost the same feeling of not having a job. Right. (laughs) Because we will have weeks where either I go out or Tyler and I will go out together like two or three times during the week. And, you know, we'll rack up, uh, you know, six, seven, eight hours. Those really good weeks. Then we'll have weeks where we'll get the occasional phone call. Hey, can you help? Blah, blah, blah. You talk them through it. And... You don't charge for that. Uh, I mean, you're talking five, ten minutes at the most. Mm. Um, and then you even have weeks where there's not any, any of that, and you're just sitting <laughs> right. there twiddling your thumbs going, thank goodness for contracts. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't be eating this week or paying the mortgage. But uh, it is a uh, fine, rainy Thursday afternoon down here in South Central Georgia. How is it up there in Kentucky? It's not that bad. A little bit chilly today, but it's it's not raining at least. Well, I guess that's good. We're uh, it started clouding up yesterday and started raining a little bit, but there's this storm system that's coming up through the Gulf that's got us, and it's either going to be rained out by late evening hours or first thing in the morning or something like that. But I kind of like it. Mm. But what I don't like is when rain rains for like a solid week, and then I am ready to see sunshine, but. <laughs> Most of the time, I I enjoy the rain. That's the reason why I think I'd probably wouldn't mind being in uh, like Washington State, Seattle, and those areas, or London. <laughs> <laughs> right. It rains, uh, you know what? Ninety nine percent of the time over there. It's apparently not just London. It's the it's the entire United Kingdom from the intelligence I've been able to pull. It's like, oh, sunny day. Oh, well, that's special. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very, very special. All right, well, this is a call-in show. Um, We try to do every Monday through Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings, Eastern Time, whatever you want to call it. It's it's on the East Coast, folks. (laughs) Uh, And that number is 229-518-3525. And uh, call in. Give us your opinions on any of the stories that we're going to cover today. Or if you just you want to talk about something, you want to bring up something that might not have one iota of connection to what we're talking about. Iota, yes, that that's a southernism. Mm-hmm. So uh, today it's probably going to be somewhat tech heavy. I've been trying to figure out if we want to do like themed days, you know, mm. moronic Monday, wacky Wednesday, tech Thursday. <laughs> I have no idea what to do with Tuesday. Um, <laughs> so I didn't come up with anything about that. So, Touchy Tuesday, where we're just pissed off all day. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> Touchy Tuesday. Oh, that's where we cover nothing but a, but stories that will just piss you off. Uh, I think I think you're on to something. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. What do we want to start with here? I I kind of went video game heavy this morning whenever I was looking some things up. Um, do you have a preference of anything here you want to start out with? or I, I suppose we could start with something that's not video game related, but kind of ridiculous, I suppose you could say. Um, so radio stations are still a thing. We're trying to replace them, but they're still a thing. They are. So there was a hack, and this this is weird, because normally whenever we talk about hacks and things like this, we talk about, oh, the latest Windows 10 hack or something like that. Not like I specifically meant to. <laughs> <laughs> it works for me. Yeah. Whatever. You aristocratic <laughs> a-hole. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, but no, it's it's usually an operating system or a phone hack or something along those lines. It's usually not a radio station. Um, but apparently this happened um, to a top 40 radio station located in Brickenridge, Colorado. And 
and this and by top 40 in case anyone doesn't know what that means millennials uh the top 40 radio station means that they play all the hits they're playing your taylor swift uh all these other people that i've not heard of uh, i know i don't know who the chain smokers are <laughs> me neither that's it they've given an idea again i am so out of touch anytime on my triple m that i play that mashup from dj earworm that i play every single year because he takes all of the popular pop songs and mm-hmm. mashes them into one song. Yeah, I love those. About 80% of it, I have no godly idea who it is, and I listen to a top 40 radio station in my car, but that's only twice a week, mm-hmm. so it's not like I'm getting a good swath of it or anything. Um, but it, in other words, it's one of these things, and someone decided to hack this station and it wasn't just this station it was several but it was all at the same time hack the station's hardware to where it played a furry podcast Mm -hmm. for those of you that don't know furries are people who identify with a specific animal a lot of people automatically give them sexual undertones i I'm friends with some of these people. Not all of them are in fursuits having sex, okay? I will <laughs> put that out there. Ever ever since that one CSI episode, everyone thinks that's what they are. Um, well, you have to admit, it's a little odd mm. to want to dress up in a human size furry costume. And I, you know, each I don't judge. I do not judge. But I'm afraid that if I were to be into something like this, I would have to have the sexual component. That's just me. That's just me. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. <laughs> I tend to think it's people wanting to get in touch with a more primal side of themselves myself. Uh, but who knows? <laughs> this, isn't a, this, this, this isn't over on the boarding street where we could ask Wendy about this sort of thing. So Yeah, it's, that's true. It's the day for it, but wrong show. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so Furcast, this furry podcast, because every community has a podcast, and that's one of the awesome things about the internet and the podcasting community is you're into something, there's a show for that. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, but this one is one of the more adult ones, which does cover some of the more sexualized things and stuff like this. I actually have a friend that was into this show, and... I I just stared at them and went, I don't know if I can be friends because these guys are pissing me off. <laughs> it's, they're, they're he was the into type, the furry cast? Yeah, yeah. This, this specific show. And oh, the, okay. Well, and these guys, if I'm remembering, if it's the specific one I think it is, um, they're very heavy on saying things just to piss people off. Gotcha, gotcha. So I know that so, it says in the article that there was definitely no no loss of foul language. <laughs> Oh, yeah, they swear a lot, which I don't mind. Every podcast I listen to almost swears at this point uh, with with some notable exceptions. Um, but but it's not that. I, they just they just would say stuff just to you could clear mm-hmm. clearly tell it was to piss people off. Mm-hmm. So of course, if you're gonna troll a bunch of radio stations, <laughs> of course, why not put a controversial group of people that just want to piss people off on it, right? So uh, this lasted for 90 minutes, apparently, where they didn't know what was going on. And I've, I've got to find what the hardware was. Barracks. Uh, barracks, yes. I'm, fami- so this- I'm familiar with them. Oh, okay. Yep. <clears throat> I remember, not only did I work for a cable broadband company, <clears throat> but when we were purchased, the same, uh, the same person who bought us later bought WTIF radio stations. Here, okay. here in Tifton, and I'm I know how the barracks boxes work. Think, essentially, you know how we stream audio out. Like I'm streaming audio right now to an IceCast server. Right. Well, these barracks barracks boxes, you put them, you put uh, one on each end, and and I think they've got like multi units. Like if you're doing uh, multi <clears throat> multi stations from one uh, antenna or tower location. Anyway. So, like at the radio station where the actual sound is coming out, where you're doing all of the production, you would send an IP audio stream uh, to from that barracks box. That barracks box would have an input of like, you know, it'd have an audio input, like a one-eighth inch jack or something like that. 
it would take the audio, it digitizes, it puts it into IP format, and then it streams it across the internet to another barracks box, which then takes it, converts it back out into the standard RF that's needed to be transmitted over the air. So that's how those work. But yeah, so this, <laughs> and apparently the guys over it, they, they were not, they were not responsible for the, can you imagine the nightmare that this would be as a podcaster? Both of us are, obviously we're doing it right now. Can you imagine the nightmare of your show being picked for a stunt like this? Oh yeah. It would, it would be like, this is not the kind of publicity <laughs> we want. <laughs> yeah. Cause we didn't do it. It's not our fault. <laughs> Yeah, and apparently they even talked about the specific time. Of course, they were contacted, and they talked about a huge number of IP addresses just trying to connect to their archive all at once and everything. So it was... Why do people do stuff like this? I, I don't... I don't get it. I really <laughs> don't get it, because there is no... Sometimes people will do hacks for... Um, let's be let's be shaky here, worthy causes or stuff like that, right? Something that needs to be said, some statement that's political or otherwise. Mm -hmm. This isn't any of that. Right. This is just someone being a douche, okay? <laughs> this yeah. is all. Doing it's it just because to, to, to prove that they could. Yeah, as, as they would put it in hacker parlance. I don't know if this is actually hacker parlance or not. Um, for the lulls, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know how many people were laughing. Seriously. It's Probably not a lot because uh, one thing, the uh, I think, and it doesn't mention it in this, but those radio stations could actually be on the hook for potential FCC fines because mm -hmm. of foul language across the airwaves. Because right. you're, you're not allowed to say the F word on the, you know, on the open air, if you will. I mean, that's... That, not that specifically, but that's the beauty of, of being able to do audio streaming on the internet because right now we're not up under any type of FCC regulations on what we can and cannot say. Right. Uh, and I'm not saying that you should. I mean, it's a foul language for the sake of, of foul language to me just degrades the quality of any show that you're doing. To mm -hmm. do it, to do it for emphasis is different, you know? So I, I'm, I'm okay. and I'm, I've done it myself. You know, mm. sometimes I'll do it just to show how pissed off I am. But that's <laughs> that's emphasis, right? I'm yeah. I'm not over there just going, you know, you know, f and e f f f f and e f f just because. Well, I want to f and e f f. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. right? Actually, over on Night Attack, they ended up reinstating the belt bet because they realized that, as Justin Robert Young put it, he said, "We realized we were using the f word as a comma too much." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so they instigated that back from the NSFW days. They still swear from time to time, but whoever is caught with a belt at the end has to pay $10 to something, and we usually pick it. I mean, like, Brian had to pay 10 bucks to a Republican's campaign at some point. Oh, it's, no. And let me guess, he doesn't support the Republicans. Oh, he's libertarian all the freaking way. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hmm. But, uh, but yeah, so even even places that have a history of swearing are starting to even go against it. It's almost seeming to be a movement where if that's your natural language, sure, go for it. But eh, we're not going to swear all the dang time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, did you read... Did you read any of Barrick's actual <clears throat> press release on this? That, yeah, they have issued a statement. I didn't get to read the press release. Have you taken a look at it? Yeah, I was going to read it real quick if you want me to. Just yeah, to... go for it. All right. They, uh... Barracks would like to emphasize that its devices are secure for broadcast use when set up correctly and protected with a strong password, which in this particular case is what happened was they looked around, the, these hackers, if you will, looked around and and actually found some that had very weak passwords, like six characters or less. Mm. With several hundreds of thousands of barracks devices in operation worldwide, these unfortunate security breaches are an extreme rarity. The problem rests with securing things on the Internet in general. 
by checking one of the named listing sites, significant numbers of Internet-connected devices of all types and brands can be found. These devices are easily accessible if not properly protected. Barrick streaming devices support the highest security levels with 24-character password protection. However, attacks are made easier if this password is not used and changed regularly. Barracks is working with its broadcast clients to help resolve individual cases. Our specialists are helping now and will be at the NAB convention in Las Vegas, ex uh, exhibiting at booth C1139. Recommendations for our customers. Immediately change the password of their devices to use the full 24 characters. Review their network security. No device should be openly connected to the Internet. All devices should be secured behind firewalls or connected using a VPN. And they go on and on and uh, on that. But, yeah, mm. that, that's the thing. <clears throat> when you get these devices, unfortunately, it's the same thing that happens with wireless routers. People will get and, – and, and it's not as common now, especially I think some of the providers or the manufacturers are forcing you to do these things. But it was it's, – it's been very, very common for people to go to Staples or Walmart or wherever, get them a new wireless router, come home, plop it up. Pop it on the network, do the basic setup. Don't even bother changing the SSID. The number mm -hmm. of times that you could do war driving uh, through a city and find access points, not just routers, but access points, that their SS <coughs> SSID was um, Linksys. <laughs> right. And then, Belkin or something like that. Yeah. And then if you know what you're doing, default username and password. So, you know, that's. And, and even here, they're not suggesting that people are doing that, that they're just setting it up with default username and password. But people put passwords in that they can remember. Right. And they shouldn't, mm. uh, especially like this. I agree. Use the entire 24 characters. Have something like LastPass or a random password generator where you say, look, I want 24 characters. Randomly generate the thing with uppercase, lowercase numbers, and symbols if it supports symbols. And then put that thing behind a firewall where only the port that is that is required for it to send that data stream is the only thing open. And then if you need to do remote management, set up a VPN. It's not rocket science, folks. <laughs> <laughs> but to a lot of people, it sounds like rocket science. I mean, that's wait, let's let's be a bit fair. You and me are a bit techy, so what you just said, we understood most of it. <laughs> but <laughs> notice the we in that sentence. <laughs> um, but but uh, the point the, the point is is that some of these are radio stations that I would love to find a listing of all of these radio stations that were hit. Yeah, find out the populations of these cities, which would give me a good idea how big or small the radio station is, and then go from there because that would be an interesting little context clue to try to figure out tech levels in various things because I wonder if my own local radio station, if they use this sort of software, how secure it would be. <clears throat> well, that's a very good question. And, and you know, I, to be fair, you are not wrong when you say, okay, you have to look at the fact that just because they're RF engineers, they may not understand all the, the security risks and the nuances of using this type of technology. And I, and I ha actually experienced that firsthand after the the owner of the company I worked for bought the radio stations, well, the engineer that had been working there had been working there 30 years, 40 years, something like that. He did not understand IP at all. Mm. Uh, matter of fact, when we first set up the ability for this radio station to actually stream online, we didn't use barracks boxes. I actually used an old PC running Winamp and Shoutcast. <laughs> you know, I had a Shoutcast server that I had just a uh, a uh, 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 old server that really wasn't doing anything in the head end of the cable company building, and then uh, we had an old POS <laughs> piece <laughs> of mm, uh, computer that was just powerful enough to run a single stream, and uh, that's what I did. You know, I had them give me an audio input into the off of their off of their board. 
piped it into the computer, fired up Winamp, grabbed it, sent it out to a shoutcast stream, and then I used uh, a Flash widget on the website so that people, whenever they drove up to it, could play. But nobody else, as far as the radio station was concerned, knew how that worked. And Hmm. that itself was simplistic at the time. The barracks boxes make it even easier. It's, It's basically just plug and play. So you're right. I mean, you look at the demographics, the population densities of where these radio stations are. These engineers may not have a clue how any of this works. Mm. So, I don't know. (laughs) But it was only 90 minutes, so. Right. And it was more than one radio station. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they... uh, General manager of KXAX. I wonder how they say that. K K K hacks. I don't know. <laughs> Would be ironic if that was the case. I know, right? You know, because an X can be like a Z, or I mean, it's all kind of sounds. Oh yeah. It says it says Furcast is a hobbyist group dedicated to furry sex. Hmm. So those podcasts, so what you were saying at the very beginning of this is don't paint all furries with a broad brush. Right. This particular podcast, Furcast, is actually dedicated to furries and having sex. I got you. Mm-hmm. I understand now. Yeah. That's that's one of the reasons why I said that disclaimer at the beginning, because it's like, if I don't give this disclaimer, anyone that's going to hear this is just going to paint that layer a bit thicker <laughs> after they hear this one. <laughs> True, true, true. Well, the other thing that they point out here is um, the ease in compromising this gear is actually a much bigger problem. Think about all of the industrial control systems that are used to control building elevators and heating systems and door locks and fire alarms and and things like that. I mean, I I actually talked with, uh, when I was first forming a relationship with one of my... uh, clients that is in the air conditioning and heating business. Um, And he told me that his people actually struggle with that side of it because a lot of their industrial uh, systems are IP controlled. Uh And they don't know an IP address, a subnet, and all of that from from a hole in the ground. Right. So at that time, he's like, you know, I'll pay your hourly rate for you just ride with my guys and do this. And I'm like, okay. (laughs) <laughs> Fair we've, enough. <laughs> we've not done that, but because he hasn't called, but we'll certainly do it. Mm. But that that is something that you know we are at risk. I mean, when people can a hacker, potential hacker, and not even someone that's necessarily meaning to be malicious, but just want to prove a point, can mm. get in and and shut down an elevator. I mean, think about that. You got a woman who's pregnant. Elevator gets shut down. She goes into labor. I mean, mm. maybe all fun and games for the guy on the other end, but <laughs> if they ever find him and something happened to that baby or that woman while she was giving birth in an elevator, his life is over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> as it should be for being a dumbass. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So we got that. Um. Perfect suffix for your cyber buzzword. This was just sort of a sarcastic little thing that I found about, and we like pulling these up from time to time. Mm-hmm. It was It's pretty much pointing out the hilarity of buzzwords. Because in tech, we've got a lot of buzzwords that happen. You reckon? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so someone decided to be sarcastic and make a graph, a handy graph. This was, this was apparently in someone's... Um. Uh, buh, 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 buh. This this is from the evolution of infosec through twenty five years of RSA conference sessions, part one from crypto to cyber. So this was a presentation that someone was giving, mm. and they decided to give this slide. So, so say you're coming up with a company and you need some sort of cyber buzzword. See see if any of these fit your fancy. <clears throat> Cyber abuse, cyber adversaries, cyber alarm, cyber attack, cyber battle, 
Sab- cyber battlefield, cyber bomb, cyber bridge, breach. Cy- I like bridge. <laughs> bridge, yes. <laughs> cyber pants. Uh, <clears throat> cyber bullying. There's one we hear a lot. Uh, cyber buzzword. <laughs> wow. Just see if anyone noticed. I think. Uh, That's kind of redundant, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, cyber catastrophe, cyber challenge, cyber coin, cyber cold, cyber conflict, cop, crime, criminals, crisis, crooks, CSI, <laughs> um, defense, divide, dominance, ecosystem, environment, espionage, event, exercise, and I could just go down the entire list, but this was just a cute little thing that someone made where they went, we've got too many dang buzzwords, I think, guys. <laughs> cyber shock. I like this one. Cyber winter. The cyber winter is coming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cyber wise men. Really? <laughs> a cyber mercenary. That's what I want to be. I want to be a cyber mercenary. <laughs> Put that on your business card, right? <laughs> That's right. What? Yeah. Adkits, Adkits and Enterprises, LLC. Cyber mercenary. <laughs> What does that mean? That sounds pretty badass. What is it? Yeah. Uh, I, I do tech support. Yeah, <laughs> I do tech support. Whenever you, whenever your dial-up doesn't work, I tell you what to click. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. Yeah, anything Geddon is always a fave in cybersecurity land, too. Cy- oh, yeah. Cyber Geddon. You know, social media Geddon. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is kind of cute, though. Yeah, that was just a kind of cute thing that I pulled up. <laughs> it's not wrong. We do get crazy with our buzzwords. Mm. That's like I tweeted about two weeks ago, and I'm not, I'm not calling anybody out specifically. What the crap is that? We've been hacked. They heard us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so great. I don't know where that was coming from. Hang on a second. Wow. <laughs> We've been hacked. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Come on, Mac. <laughs> Adam Curry's had this before where something would just start playing. <laughs> All right, that is coming off the iMac. <laughs> Quit. I bet Curry was a bit more vocal than you're being, though. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> this is pretty freaking awesome. <laughs> okay. I found it. <laughs> Where was it? Um, Spotify just decided, you know what? I know that you didn't press the play button on me, but you guys are boring. So <laughs> apparently that's what it was. All right. Okay. But anyway, um, <clears throat> no, I- I'm not calling anybody out, you know, John Lee Dumas, but um, <laughs> I-, I can't stand the knowledge bomb that mm. term knowledge bomb you know uh and, and i know he means well and and, and i'm poking fun at him jovially oh. you know I, but yeah we love him just <laughs> he he said I think that's more a californianism too it might be it's... and i mean i follow him on snapchat and mm-hmm. when he's talking about you know we had a good good session today where and he talks about somebody else you know and so and so just just laid all kind of knowledge bombs and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, do we really have to call them knowledge bombs? <laughs> I mean, that sounds so freaking moronic to me. <laughs> it's a knowledge bomb. No, he provided us with some very good information is what he did. But but think of how boring that I may defend knowledge bomb and not even mean to. Think of how boring it would be to go, I went to a conference. And there was some fantastic information being told to us. <laughs> no, but Knowledge Bob, it's like, whoa, blew my mind, dude. He's like, yo, 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 it was a great conference and more. There was Knowledge Bombs all over the place, dude. Every time I took a step, it was like, go, I had nothing but Knowledge Bombs. Yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> too freaking hipster. 
Oh, I've, I've, I suspect I have a bit of hipster in me. I'm not going to lie. There's Freaking a- millennials are hipsters. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. I'm done. I'm a millennial. I, t- I try. I know. I try. I, I stop the entitlement from happening, but there's other things that little things that sneak through. <laughs> uh, it's okay. But yeah, we, we do get a little carried away with the buzzwords. Uh, mm. and, Specifically in tech, I think is yeah. why I brought this up because me and you cover tech and yeah. stuff. So to, yeah. Someone to finally call it out. It's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It gets nuts in tech. It really does. Um, <clears throat> And oh, I, I wish I had some examples right off the top of my head, but all this other stuff that's in the tech industry that's not even specifically connected to tech, like the whole leaning in and oh, yeah. all this, you know, all this other kind of stuff. And I'm like, can can we not just speak plain English here of people? You know, why do, why do you have to doll it all up? And then, of course, I realized that Spotify starts playing because apparently we weren't being dolled up enough. So, <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> oh, thank you, Spotify. Thanks, Obama. Anyway, <laughs> <clears throat> so let's see. Um, quickly, we'll we'll cover this because this might be one of these uh, particular articles that we might want to actually uh, cross-pollinate with uh, tech slant. Yeah. But it's dealing with uh, senators are working uh, on the most anti-encryption bill yet. Fortunately, mm-hmm. the, White ha- <clears throat> the White House has already refused to publicly support it. Um, it's being worked on by Senators Richard Burr and Diane Feinstein, or Feinstein, whatever the heck her name is, and I can't stand her anyway. <laughs> but um, Kevin Bankston, the director of New America Foundation's Open Technology Institute, told Wired that in his 20 years of working in tech policy, quote, this is easily the most ludicrous, dangerous, technically illiterate proposal he's ever seen. Wired even notes that privacy experts thinks it's so bad that it's good because it's very unlikely that the bill will become law as it is. <laughs> and, you know, let's, let's stop and think about the fact that <clears throat> you can recall over the years where they've had congressional meetings where they want to talk about uh, net neutrality and all of these things. And that you've actually had senators and congressmen sitting up there like, well, why don't we get some nerds in here and actually talk about these things? Because apparently – we don't know anything about any of this. And this right. is and, and to me, this is the same thing. Um, when you've got senators trying to come up with what is called the Compliance with Court Orders Act of 2016, which would require people and companies to comply with judicial orders demanding access to the data. So if this had actually been in place when all of this came about with Apple, by law, they would have had no choice. Right. So, and it's obvious this is what this is reacting to, of right? Course. The whole Apple fiasco. Yeah, yeah. So according to the draft, um, if an entity that receives a court order, they must provide data in an intelligible format. That's in quotes. <laughs> if the info has been made unintelligible. Translation, encrypted. <laughs> right. Yeah. By a feature, product, or service. Yeah, nice um, try. We know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, if the entity can't readily give the government a copy of unencrypted data, then it must provide appropriate technical assistance to get it. Um, it also wants licensed distributors to ensure their products provide access to the government, such as iTunes and Google Play would have to make sure their apps uh, <clears throat> they sell have little to offer in terms of security features, which means that the most popular SMS app on the planet, yeah. WhatsApp, who just implemented end-to-end encryption, wouldn't pass the screening process, meaning it would immediately be deemed illegal. And I have quite a few friends that would be ticked off. <laughs> right, right. You know, the the WhatsApp adoption is actually larger in other countries than it is in the United States. Yeah, a lot of my international people had this whenever I was first getting to know some of my international contacts, and they said, you got WhatsApp? Like, 
got mm-hmm. an iPod. For some stupid reason, it won't let me put this on there. So no, I don't have what WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think it's it requires the ability to be able to send SMS. <clears throat> so yeah. that's the reason why it won't work on a a non phone device. Mm-hmm. I, have you checked it recently, though? I mean, I I haven't checked it recently because it's not been a priority need to yeah. do that because we've just figured out other things that work exactly like WhatsApp. But let me put it on an iPod, mm-hmm. so it's just it's just WhatsApp having that WhatsApp having that one rule yeah. in place. So yeah, well. The big thing about this particular <clears throat> bill, though, is um, it's not it's there's about a ninety nine point nine 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 eight seven six three two percent chance that it's not going anywhere, mm-hmm. but um, it 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 makes you wonder because mm-hmm. if if they start getting this type of thing in their sites and because you know let's keep in mind uh, there are other countries China that <laughs> do not allow encryption at all. Mm. Uh, because I mean it's illegal. They do not want to uh, run up against a situation where they can't read everything that you're doing. So, yeah, I hate it. I hate it for I hate it for the senators. Maybe they should actually go work on something that that actually needs to be worked on. Like I don't know the national debt, uh, <laughs> um, school loans, you know that kind of thing. Mm. <laughs> uh let's see <clears throat> um, okay here's what sexist video games do to boys brains now i have not read this and i have the strangest suspicion you're baiting me with this but let's let's go for it <laughs> uh, well no actually it's exactly well i could be but all right so <clears throat> Playing sexist video games can reduce empathy toward female violence victims, a new study suggests. So just absorb that that statement. If you play a sexist video game, then it could reduce, if you're a dude, reduce empathy that you might have toward a, a female friend who has been a victim of violence. Mm -hmm. That's what this study is suggesting. All right. And of course, Grand Theft Auto, that's one of the ones they're talking about. Of course. (laughs) So the article reads, it can be easy to objectify women in some popular video games. In some games, you can even have your character pay a woman for sex and then kill her if you are so inclined. Everyone skips over that last part and go, no, there's, we've had this conversation before. <laughs> That's right, if you're so inclined. I I play Grand Theft Auto as legal as possible. Let's put it that way. It's really bizarre, but anyway. <laughs> well, and one of the things I think that is uh, it's kind of a, a, a salient point that's made down further is people look at the negativity of the violence and the objectification of women in these video games. And I'm not, I'm not, condoning objectifying uh women in these video games i mean oh yeah if you're gonna if you're gonna objectify women do it for men too i mean fair is fair you Mm -hmm. know do it do it for all or don't do it at all right but one of the points they make is and and we'll get to it is it's much better for people to be in there acting out their aggressions in these video games than it is going out and shooting people or going postal or or anything like that and of course, Donovan, the, don't don't you know that we, they play these games and it makes them so violent, and then they go out in the world and want to do everything in real life. Yeah, and me <laughs> watching porn makes me want to go star in a porno too. But <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, not. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'd never get bow chicka wow wow out of my head. But <sighs> <sighs> there's an image I didn't want. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, talk about okay. I'll I have to bring that up later. <clears throat> it was some. It was a family discussion that we were having uh, last week, based on something that my daughter had read about a mother and a son who had been separated at uh, the, the the birth of the son. Oh then no! Re- you're not about to tell me. Reconnected 
And I don't, and I, what I can't remember is if when they reconnected, did they first, when they first reconnected, if they knew that they were mother, son or not, but they now want to get married and said that the sex that they have is the most mind blowing sex that they've ever had in their lives. Oh. That's an image you can't get out of your head. I'm out. I'm, I'm out. <laughs> good, good night, everybody. I'm... It's been good. Peace, Cleveland. Wait, I'm not there. Anyway. Tifton. <laughs> Someone in Cleveland might be listening. That could be accurate. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, a new study that came out yesterday reports that boys who play uh, the kind of games where women are secondary characters who are used as sexual objects by players show diminished empathy toward female victims. So this new study, which was published in the journal PLOS One, <clears throat> never heard of it, it's P-L-O-S One, randomly assigned 154 male and female high schoolers to play one of three types of games. Video games that the researchers say contain both violence and sexism, two Grand Theft Auto games, games with violence but without sexism, Half-Life 1 or Half-Life 2. Yeah, there ain't no sexism in there. <laughs> and games without violence or sexism, Dream Pinball 3D or Cube 2. <laughs> the... the... The vast difference in these games is hilarious, right? I know, right? <laughs> so after they played the game, researchers asked them how much they identified with the character they were controlling. They also showed them a photo of an adolescent girl whom they were told had been physically beaten by an adolescent boy. They were then asked how compassionate they felt toward her. They found that boys who played the games containing sexism and violence were more likely to identify with the character they were playing, and they reported less empathy toward the images of female victims. That did not hold true for girls who played these games, suggesting that the games may impact boys and girls differently. Hmm. So, if a girl plays Grand Theft Auto, and she pays to have sex with a hooker and then kills her, she is not... She doesn't have the predisposition to have less empathy toward another female that has been a victim of violence. My question is, how would she feel against a male who was a victim of violence? Well, let's say she, 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 she which I don't think they have male prostitutes in Grand Theft Auto, do they? No. All right. Well, let's say for the sake of argument, they did. See, to me, th that would be a very good test to do. If you're going to do it for the guys <clears throat> who are playing violent and, and sexist video games, and then let's see how their empathy levels are toward a, a, a woman or a girl who has been the subject of violence, well, then do the same test. Have, mm. have, you know, have high school age girls play violent and sexist games, but they're sexist toward men, where men are objectified. And then see how they feel whenever they're told, well, you know, this guy over here uh, was raped by other guys. Mm. You know, how would they feel? I'm curious about that. They never do those types of studies. There, There is a stigma involved because, oh, well, okay, time to get personal. A guy can get abused by a woman. I <clears throat> True. know from a horrible marriage I had. Anyway, um, <clears throat> People make mistakes when they're young. That was mine. Uh, but the point is, there is a weird stigma involved with whether it's like people accept, and I'm not lowering the horrificness of what a guy abusing a woman is, mm -hmm. right? It's right. horrific. And quite frankly, any guy that I hear has that way, that way, there is no thoughts here. Any guy that I hear that has abused a woman, I want to take a crowbar to his crotch. Okay. <laughs> That's. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Multiple times, not just one smack. Just make sure. <laughs> that way it doesn't kill him, but it makes him think about it for the rest of his life. You'll um, never do this again. Whack. Because <laughs> you're not physically able. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, but. But no, there is this very weird stigma involved with guys being abused by women. And instead of people taking the tact of, oh, that's horrible, they take it like, well, you're not much of a man, are you? Mm -hmm. And it's horrible, right? Yeah. So it's, ugh, but anyway. 
Yeah, see, I, I would <clears throat> I would never abuse my wife. Uh, two reasons. One, I love her and, and you know, respect her. Uh, number two, she would kick my ass. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we're, we're equal <clears throat> as far as, you know, we're the same height. Um, y- you know, it's not one of those where the dude's like six foot and the, and the woman's like five foot one or something and, and dainty. <laughs> Puts her up on a shelf. Uh, hell no. Right. <laughs> you know, she put this baby in a corner. Mm. Um, so anyway, um, so Brad Brushman, a professor of communications and psychology at Ohio State University, said it's it's not just an association. You can't say all the boys who lacked empathy played the sexist game. If mm-hmm. they are randomly assigned, they should have equal empathy levels. If they differ after the game, the only things that can cause that difference is the game or a random fluke. And scientists are pretty careful to avoid random flukes. Yeah, I noticed that. They didn't say anything about testing their empathy before they played the games, did they? Uh, No, they didn't. Because that's the one thing that occurred to me. I was like, you take a bunch of random, I'm going to be ageist a bit here probably, but you take a bunch of random high school boys Mm -hmm. and just ask them this question without the video games? Yeah. How how, How do they rate? I'd about 50-50 say that chances are you're still going to get the same results with or without the games because I've run into some little uh, craps <laughs> when I, I'm going to censor myself. I've run into some little craps when it comes to high school boys in particular where I'm like, oh, for Pete's sake. Mm-hmm. So so, you, so you're the one that's going to take care of things whenever I'm an old man. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to die early. Okay, fine. <laughs> the, the rapture needs to happen now. <laughs> <laughs> get me out of this mess yeah, that's right <laughs> just do it for me i don't yeah. i don't care just do it for me would you so i don't have to deal with these people <laughs> <laughs> like a line i love from braveheart <laughs> god said he can get me out of this mess but you're pretty much effed <laughs> <laughs> yeah <All> right <laughs> oh goodness um so uh from the article In the Grand Theft Auto games, uh, the women are often prostitutes or strippers, and players can physically harm them, which, according to researchers, can be followed by a reward of points or extra health for the the character. Why does it... I I don't understand that line. What do you mean, according to researchers? I think it's pretty much according to anybody who's played the game. Yes, that is correct. You get a reward of points or an extra health for the character. I mean, uh, that that line just sounded funny to me. Yeah, I think the prostitution leads to you getting full health. And again, it's almost an Easter egg that everyone knows about at this point, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah. So anyway. Bushman says video games differ from exposure to violence and sexism and other forms of media because a player is taking an active role. And this is something I hadn't really thought about, but is is true. He said, we know people learn better than when they are actively involved. When you watch a film, you may zone out. But when you play a video game, you can't. Well, you can, but then you're me playing heroes going, why did I just die? But, um, <laughs> you know, when you watch a TV show, maybe you don't identify with the character, but in a game, you have no choice. You are the one who controls the character's actions. But the study is not without limitations. The sample is still considered relatively small. More re- research is needed to fully understand how video games might impact a person's view or even behavior. And... um Let's see, I think this is where I was talking about earlier. Michael Ward, who's a professor of economics at the University of Texas at Arlington, has studied the link between video games and behavior and says that playing video game, violent video games doesn't necessarily mean a person will engage in a violent act in real life, in part perhaps because they spend so much time playing them. Kids and young adults who are playing violent video games are spending so many hours doing this, he says, every hour you spend in your den playing video games is an hour you're not getting drunk and getting into trouble. <laughs> the time use effect will dominate any behavioral change. Interesting way of looking at it that I hadn't thought of. <laughs> yeah. I agree with him anyway, but I'm just saying that it's an interesting little wrinkle I had never considered. <laughs> well, you know, and <clears throat> my wife and I, like like I've said many, many times before, we spent many years playing World of Warcraft, you know, mm. hours and hours and hours every day. And... We even talked about that, not from a getting in trouble perspective, but in a money-saving perspective. We weren't going out 
uh, clubbing or, you know, doing things that other couples would do on Friday and Saturday nights that would, you know, make them spend a crap ton of money. We mm-hmm. just we just spent, you know, between the two of us, $30 a month on a video game that we absolutely enjoyed playing. And right. we spent time with each other playing in there. Yeah, we were mm-hmm. in the same room playing. But we were also in the in the game together playing, and then friends and all of that. And World of Warcraft is not a violent game, and it's not sexist, right. even though, my God, those female night elves look hot. But <laughs> mm, mm, mm. that's the reason why I actually roll mostly female characters, so that I can watch their wiggle as they run. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Get your sexism right here, right here. <laughs> anyway, so that's an interesting study that they did. That the it, part of what that text was, the last bit that you read intrigued me. The whole taking an active role versus television and stuff like that. Yeah. Let me ask you this because hold on. Sorry, I didn't want to cough into the microphone. Um, th- this was a conversation that come up came up with me and my mom recently because we were talking about, in specifics, Grand Theft Auto. I mean, one of the games that I'll never play on my network will be Grand Theft Auto V. Even though I've played it, I just it's dodgy for the way that we run things for us to ever run a Grand Theft Auto game, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We'll get away with other <laughs> Rockstar games like Red Dead Redemption and Bully. I think both of those we're planning to do at some point because they're, they're fine when it comes to those aspects and more understandable. But when it comes to Grand Theft Auto, Mom did have a serious question for me because she said that if she were playing a character actively, she would have problems disassociating herself from the character, right? Yeah. She would She would feel that she was the character. Weirdly enough, we're starting to get games, and an example of it being Grand Theft Auto V, where it's really not designed for you to feel that you are that character. Especially in the case of that game, because there are three main characters that you switch between with a storyline that intertwines between Mm -hmm. all of them and stuff. Mm -hmm. So even if it was designed that way, it was going to fail because (laughs) you're playing three people. You can't possibly feel like you're one of them when you're playing three of them. I guess guess not. But I... I am weirdly able to disassociate myself from these characters. That's how I am able to play a mission that Trevor plays on Grand Theft Auto V and not immediately feel like I need to do repentance. (laughs) Because because Trevor's a horrible human being, but narratively, that was the point. We were supposed to feel like he was the slimiest human being on God's green earth, and that's why... Those worked because you played some of the early missions as him doing some abominable things just so you realized, oh, no, this guy's a nut. He's <laughs> crazy. He's insane. He's a psycho- psychopath. And now he's in the mix sort of thing. So even though you played as him, I never really felt that I was him. Mm-hmm. And and even the, the weirdest one, and both of us have played this game, I I don't know if you've gotten around to finishing it yet, but like Bioshock Infinite, for instance. Yeah, yeah, I finished it. Okay, the, that's right, I remember now. But the way that they crafted that story, even though you were c- controlling Booker DeWitt the whole time, I never felt like I was him. Because he was. it was one of the rare examples of first-person shooter character. I don't play many first-person shooters, but anyway. <laughs> of a first-person character, I suppose, where I never felt that I was the character because... You heard him speak the entire time and stuff like that. It really, yeah. you didn't feel like you were him. So, I've th- never, you know, and, and I've never actually associated or connected with any particular character that I played in a video game that I can recall. Mm. Like, <clears throat> I mean, I can say that I have, I have come away from watching a movie, um, something, you know, a Rambo movie or some just action packed. You know, feel good, good guy just kicks the crap out of the bad guy. You know, you come out of that, uh, watching that type of movie and you feel pumped. Um, I would get that more from a movie than I would from a video game, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. So it's weird. I've I've never really done such a deep dive into a video game that that, that I just really connected. I'm, I guess I'm always disassociated with it. It's mm-hmm. just, 
Because I realize, I mean, this is a video game. This is not real. Just because in this particular video game, I can go and pay this hooker and have sex with her. And then, oh, I don't know. I've always dreamed of cutting her arms off and her legs and mutilating her. No, I haven't. But <laughs> I can do this. Um, Even if I were to do that in the video game, I wouldn't come away from going, you know what? That wasn't a bad experience. If I were to see that in real life, eh, big deal. <laughs> I've never felt that way. Now, I will say this. We are more desensitized to violence now than years and years and years ago, I guess. Mm. So... But I tend to think that's our media as a whole, not just games and stuff like that. I think everything's just gotten violent. <laughs> so it's... Yeah, that's assault. true. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I just noticed I got an error in Wirecast. It said, hey, your export failed. I'm like, um, really? <laughs> this is a great piece of software. <laughs> uh and the only reason why I'm using it is so we can stream to Facebook. So, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> All right. So, we're moving away from that to moving to power up. Playing video games may boost your brain. This mm. is something we pretty much already knew. I mean, we, let me let me back up and say we knew that you can uh, the whole hand eye coordination. You know, kids that were brought up on video games do better in hand eye coordination than those who who haven't. Right. That's pretty much a given. What this is saying is that um, a, a new study finds that gaming may actually boost the amount of gray matter in parts of a person's brain, indicating that the brain may have better control over small movements in the body. So what they did is researchers found that video game players had more gray matter in two areas of the brain associated with learning motor skills compared with people who did not play video games. Interesting. And of course, in addition to video game players in the study had quicker reaction times. So who would have thunk it? So the next time, you know, parents want to get on their kids for playing video games so much, uh, just let them, <laughs> you know, make Within sure they, <laughs> take, make sure they take the trash out, cut the yards and all of that. But otherwise just, let them sit there and play video games. You never know. They might actually become popular on Twitch, and, well, suddenly, they're making more money per year than you are. <laughs> <laughs> Sad but true. Sad but true. <laughs> and, yes, for transparency's sake, my son does work at Twitch. <laughs> uh, let's see. We are approaching the witching hour. Well, not really. The witching hour is 12 o'clock. Um, mm -hmm. let's I would just be a lot less coherent if we were approaching the witching hour. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one one last story then uh, to uh, talk about. If you don't normally play video games, then this deal will get you hooked. Oh yeah, and this is the uh, humble bundle, which if you're not familiar with that, that's where they get a collection of games, and <clears throat> I think they give this. They give uh, the money that they get. Part of it goes to like charity and what have you. Yeah. So, and you can even choose the charities. They usually give you a list. There's usually a a bit of them mm -hmm. that they go, well, you can give this percentage to this, this percentage to this. That's that sort of thing. So, yeah. And in in a typical hum humble bundle, you can actually pay what you want. Um, mm -hmm. But this one, you can get the entire set for twelve dollars, and the entire set is. Telltale Games, uh, which I'm interested in this simply because I've never played any Telltale Games. Oh, you haven't? No, I have never played uh. any. Not that I'm aware of, because here they're talking about The Walking Dead, Game of Thrones, Borderlands. Now, Minecraft, what what are they doing with Minecraft? Minecraft's not a Telltale game. Yeah, but there there is a Telltale game called Minecraft Story Mode. Oh, that one, okay. So it's... It's a choose-your-own-adventure that, well, yeah, point-and-click is a better term for it. Mm -hmm. But t Telltale is dang good at the, because for a while, there is the, was this huge stretch in my gaming career 
where I played a bunch of point and click adventures. A lot of them were based on classic mystery novels, murder mysteries, stuff like that. A lot of Agatha Christie out there if you look for it, in fact. Um, but they're just these point and click adventures where you go around, find objects, combine puzzles, stuff like that. And they're fun to me, at least. Um, Telltale brought them back, in my opinion, because for a while, they just didn't exist. Mm -hmm. There were no point and click adventures. You couldn't find them. And then Telltale comes around and gets the art back moving again. So, yeah, Telltale, in my opinion, is very good at this sort of thing. The last, the last Telltale game I played was Tales from the Borderlands, and anyone that liked the Borderlands series, mm -hmm. you need to play this game because it is freaking hilarious. It's everything you like about Borderlands without having to go first-person shootery with it. So it's it's characters from the games. It's some new characters that have never been around before. You play as two separate characters telling the story of how they got to where they are to someone that's captured them, mm -hmm. along with little meta moments where they'll say something, and then it'll happen, and then the other person will interrupt and go, that is not what happened, okay? <laughs> so... It's beautiful. And and a side note, uh, the guy that works for Hyperion, that is one of the characters that you play as, his best friend is played by Chris Hardwick. So oh. you can be friends with Hardwick and stuff. It's it's beautiful. It really is. Because he's a dang good voice actor. The things that Chris Hardwick does in the voice acting field, perfect. Uh, and this is no exception. So it's it's it was a good game. Um, I still have other Telltale games. I've played the Back to the Future one. It's fantastic, considering we're never going to get another Back to the Future movie. True. This this carries on from it to where Marty's just going about, and then suddenly the DeLorean shows up, which that got destroyed on the train tracks. How the heck is a DeLorean suddenly here? Along with a recording from Doc that says, Marty, if you're getting this, it means I'm in trouble. You need to hop into the DeLorean, go to the last coordinates, and save me. You know. <laughs> And then they go through a whole explanation of, well, apparently the lightning strike caused a temporal problem, which made another copy of a DeLorean somewhere that the doc ended up having to find and stuff like that. Oh, God. <laughs> Sounds like Riker on TNG. <laughs> yeah, a teensy bit. Uh, but yeah, so that's one I've played before. Um, I still have The Wolf Among Us, and I've been meaning to play that. I have never fiddled with the Game of Thrones or Walking Dead ones because I'm not a fan of either one of those specific properties. So I have a feeling. Plus, I've been told The Walking Dead, depressing as you'll get out. Yeah, it's. Which, I'm not a. I'm not a fan of Walking Dead. Now, Game of Thrones, as far as a television series, <clears throat> top notch. Mm. But I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, if you can, if you can look past all of the gregarious sex and actually <laughs> look at the story that's being yeah. told, right. it is. It is fantastic. Um. But now, as far as this is concerned, for $12, you actually get the two seasons of The Walking Dead. You get uh, the offshoot 400 Days. You get Game of Thrones, A, Wo uh, a Wolf Among Us, uh, Back to the Future, the game. 2015 should not be missed Tales from the Borderlands like you're talking about. Mm -hmm. You also get Poker Night and Poker Night 2, uh, where you actually play against characters from Portal, The Venture Brothers, Borderlands, and 2000's web cartoon celebrity Strong Bad. Uh, yeah. So I think, and you got about uh, 12 days left, I think, on this deal. Let me check. 11 days, 22 hours, 50 minutes, and 18 seconds. So I may spend the $12 and get all of these. And some Telltale games do, um, especially Tales from the Borderlands was like this. They do still require you to be a bit twitchy if that makes sense. So you're still going to, oh, crap, I need to hit this arrow key real quick and stuff like that. So they're quick time events. But that's about the closest thing that I've run into a Telltale game of it being that sort of situation. So, yeah, it's I'm, I'm thinking about getting it, too, just for the games I don't own because there is enough value in this, even with the games I do own, for me to still pay 12 bucks and go, Heck yes, this is good. Well, you know, all of these come up on Steam, and the way Steam works is if you already own a game, I don't know how that's going to work. I don't I don't guess, because, I mean, if you go and you buy it on Steam, if you buy, mm -hmm. like, a bundle, and let's say it's three games and you already own, like, the third one, and you want to get just 
the first two, you don't have, they actually reduce the cost. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how they do it here, but so yeah, their list right now is, is, uh, Back to the Future, the game, Sam and Max, Devil's Playhouse, Poker Night at the Inventory, Puzzle Agent 1 and 2, The Walking Dead Season 1. If you pay 12 or more, you get Game of Thrones, The Walking Dead Season 2. If you pay more than the average of $8.16, you also get The Walking Dead 400 Days, The Wolf Among Us, Poker Night 2, Tales from the Borderlands, and more games coming soon. Ooh. So <laughs> I wonder what that means when it says more games coming soon. So like if I... If I pay twelve dollars, or maybe mm-hmm. I just want to make it an even fifteen, you know, right. give the charity. Does that right. mean that if they provide more games, do I get those? You do, because I've been in a situation with Humble Bundle before. And also, when it comes to Steam, they give you the Steam codes individually. Ah. I have a friend that back in the early Let's Play days, we called the Mysterious Benefactor because I never gave his name. And and even though he said, I could give you permission, but you know what? I like that nickname. Just call me the Mysterious Benefactor from now on. It sounds pretty cool. Um, But anytime he would get a Humble Bundle because he knew that I did these things, if he got a Humble Bundle that had games that he already owned, Uh he'd give us the games. Cool. You know, so you could totally do that by gifting them and stuff too. So it's... It totally works that way. It's That's right. I forget. I have gotten some hum- humble bundle stuff before, and I, I forgot they actually just send you the codes and you redeem them, and there you go. Mm. That is one of the coolest systems to be able to do that, or like you say, gift it to somebody. Mm. So yeah, I'm definitely I'm intrigued now. Uh, I I may want to play some of these and actually stream them on the uh, Slant FM Twitch channel. Mm. So none of these are two player though, right? They're all single player stuff. They're all single player stuff, but mind you, you can easily make it multiplayer by talking over your decisions and stuff like that. Yeah, so. yeah. Which I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people that have streamed these and and done exactly that. So, mm. cool. All right, I think that's it. Mm. As they say, that's a wrap. Indeed. <laughs> So this is the last show of the week. Um, We only got to do two shows this week because we both had things to do Monday and Tuesday, which, you know, that's okay. Uh, It's been a good week so far. Well, other than the uh, (laughs) other than the theft, which during the recording, I think I might have gotten a call from the sheriff's department. I don't know. The number looks sort of familiar. So I may be getting my stuff back this afternoon or tomorrow. I don't know, but we'll see. But um. So we do uh, we do try to do this show every Monday through Thursday at 2 p.m. right now. That may change subject to uh, availability of either myself or Sam, uh, depending on Sam's job situation. But we'll we'll keep things updated as we move along. And uh, <clears throat> otherwise, we uh, will be back here Monday. Uh, Sam, you got anything going on? Um, anything you want to uh, promote Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever? No, just that we've got, well, I haven't promoted this, so I might as well. Um, on Fridays, we do have an ongoing Let's Play section that is happening where me and Mom have been playing Lego Dimensions. Spoiler alert, we've already played through it. You guys are just behind because I only do one a week. Um, <laughs> but no, that's been going on, and it's been quite fun. So if you want to check that out, it's tscn.tv. And for those specifically, you can go to tscn.tv slash play to find those. Cool. And if and if you want to find me more personally, then about.me slash labtech7. Very good. Very good. And uh, we also, every other Friday, we record Tech Slant. Um, haven't been streaming it live. We may go back to doing that. I don't know. But anyway, um, it's, a, it's a tech talk. I mean, it, it's a podcast where we talk about technology specifically. Right. And um, we do that every other week. Matter of fact, we're scheduled to record one tomorrow night so that'll be episode 120 i think so anyway um there's that otherwise just you know check out slant.fm everything that i'm doing uh is there and uh, my personal connections are over at about.me slash gda kissing so we'll be back monday unless something changes around 2 p.m uh eastern time um for another episode wide open talk show so Everybody have a great Friday, have a great weekend, and we'll see you Monday. Take care. Bye-bye.
This show is a production of the Slant FM Digital Network. Find more at slant.fm.